Hello there guys and welcome back to 100% Chelsea for my review of the Chelsea vs Southampton game and we won 4-2 yet again you know in three days two 4-2 four, four, victories you know can't complain um first of all if I do seem a little bit less you know energetic throughout the video I've got a terrible headache so I'm please excuse that anyway getting into the game coming to the lineup there was a little bit of a surprise in there for me personally so um Gary Cale was healthy enough um, and fit enough to start the game ahead of Nathan Aki um so obviously it started off with Thibaut Courtois and goal, Gary Cahill, David Luiz and Zizas really quite the three centre-backs. The two wing-backs obviously stayed the same in Marcus Alonso and Victor Moses. And, um, you know, two central midfielders stayed the same as well in Nemanja Matic and um, N'Golo Kante. But, and, um, you know, the, the, the official Twitter account put it out as a 4-3-3. And then, you know, where I watched it um, on TV, they put it out as a 4-3-3. And even the, like, the official Twitter page after that put it out as a 4-3-3 again. So, um... Apparently, it was Hazard on the left wing, Costa as the striker, and Fabregas on the right wing. I mean, he drifted in a lot of the time. I mean, he was out, like, out wide on the right at some point, but not really enough for me to actually say he played there like as his main position. Um, for me, it was a 3-5-2, but, you know, make of it what you want doesn't really matter, does it? Anyway, um, only five minutes in, Eden Hazard made it 1-0. Great goal. Enjoyed it very much. Um Cesc Fabregas played a great through ball to Diego Costa, who held it up well, just waited until Eden Hazard was, you know, just free enough to play and the passing line wasn't blocked by any Southampton player. Played it to Eden Hazard, who put it, you know, took it first time, put it into the far corner, quality finish, and, um, you know, obviously great start. But after that, first five minutes were really good, but after that, I don't know, I, was, I wasn't too happy with it. We sat back too much, we let Southampton have the ball too much, they played it around a lot. I mean, they didn't manage to create many chances, hardly any, to be honest, but we just gave them the ball too much and gave them too much control and they felt a little bit too comfortable, I felt like. And in 24th minute, Oriol Romeo, obviously former Chelsea player, made a 1-0 um, after a corner. Um, it, you know, it was a long corner. Gabbiadini was completely on his own behind the far post. Kante, sorry mate, I mean, you just won the PFA Player of the War, uh, Player of the Year award, but he just completely forgot about Gabbiadini. Like, completely forgot about him uh, because um, he was the only one left. He was just stood in the middle of the box and didn't mark anyone. Um... Then Gabbiadini took it back, tried to low cross it in. Then he took a deflection, slide deflection of Thibaut Courtois' leg, fell directly to Oriol Romeo, and then he just put it into in from like one yard. <laughs> so um, annoying goals. Like we just can't defend crosses, whether that's free kicks or corners. Even though we haven't conceded a lot from corners, I think it was just one or two goals before that this season. But generally, crosses and free kicks and corners just terrible. We just can't deal with it. I think when the ball is played on the ground. We're probably one of the best defenders in the world. But as soon as he gets up in there, we're terrible. Um, you know, terrible is probably a bit of an exaggeration. But not good enough anyway. Um, and then luckily, in the you know, first minute of injury time of the first half, Gary Cahill made it 2-1, um, which was very important. You know, we had a corner, got played in, then he got cleared out. I think it fell to Kante. Might have been someone else. Sorry, I can't remember. He played the crossing, then Alonso got ahead to it. Gary Cahill made a great run um, and... You know, put in a great header, to be honest. They put it into the low bottom corner. Diego Costa was actually just trying to bicycle kick it. And, you know, Gary Cahill just got his head to the ball earlier. Probably Diego would have skied it. Because, um, you know, his positioning wasn't perfect to actually get it in. But as as long as it's in, that that's all that matters. And obviously going into halftime with the lead was crucial, was vital. It reminded me a lot <laughs> the first half um, of the... Tottenham game. <laughs> you know, we scored really early on. Then they equalised... Um, from a corner, pretty much, which which it was against Tottenham, and then we score a late two one before half time. Anyway, getting into the second half, that oh, thankfully wasn't the same as Tottenham because that was just two tens. Diego Costa finally back with scoring. Finally, um, he made it three one after we had a corner. Cesc Fabregas and Eden Hazard played it short, played a one two, then Fabregas put it in a nice, you know, chip cross really and Diego Costa got his head to it put himself about well against Ryan Bertrand in the box and put it in nothing the keeper could have done about it again and it was important for Diego Costa to get that goal because he hasn't scored in a while um, a lot of us um, have been criticising him but ob and obviously you know that's the best way to you know to shut up critics in the 77th minute Pedro came on for Cesc Fabregas um, and in the 86th minute John Terry came on for Victor Moses which I absolutely loved the whole stadium loved it Great, absolutely great. Loved it for him to get a few minutes. And then in the 89th minute, oh my God, can we just appreciate that goal? I mean, he wasn't as good as Matic on Saturday. What well, was incredible? You know, Diego Costa has the ball on the wing. You know, we always criticise him when he's out on the wing. He goes past two players, plays it to Hazard. Hazard plays a 1-2 with him, plays it straight back to Diego. 
First, first time played it back to Pedro. Udan with his back heel played it back to Diego. Diego went past another two players and a low shot in the bottom corner. Incredible goal. Incredible by everyone involved, um, especially Diego Costa. I mean, that goal really, you know, the, 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 the like the first goal he scored in the game, the 3-1, that really just took off so much hindering or pressure or whatever it was because Diego wasn't doing any of that for like the last month. That was outstanding. Absolutely incredible. I mean, he scored two goals and assisted one. What more can you want? Great. Love it. Absolutely love it. And in the 90th minute, William came on for Hazard. And then I actually went to have a piece. Came back and suddenly it's 4 2. I'm like, what? What's going on? So um, we did concede uh, the 4 2 in the 94th minute through Ryan Bertrand. Like, all six goals were scored by Chelsea players or former Chelsea players. Bit annoying that. Um, but, you know, was the cross being put in? Again, defending from Costas. To be honest, to be fair to our defenders, you can't expect Ryan Bertrand to be running into the box like a crazy person. You know, then he wasn't playing wing back; he was playing normal left back. So, um, you, know, you can't expect that. But you know, you should always you should be able to deal with anything. You should expect everything in football. But we didn't. He kind of ran right in between David Luiz and Gary Cahill, got ahead to it, put it into the far corner. And it doesn't matter. But we really have to work on that defending in the air. Like it's not good, especially for Sunday against Everton. Probably our last very, very difficult game of the season. And um, we have to win that. There's no doubt about it. But yeah, that's really it. Obviously, Tottenham play Crystal Palace away tomorrow night. And, um, you know, I fancy Crystal Palace for that one. Um, you know, they beat us. They beat Arsenal 3 0 at their place. They just beat Liverpool at Anfield. Was it at Anfield? Yeah, I think it was at Anfield. And um, now they're playing Tottenham, you know, at Tellas Park. I fancy Palace to at least get a point. And um, it would obviously be great. I mean, I'd love it. And, um, you know, it would be an even a bigger blow for Tottenham and um, then they might even drop more points to Arsenal on the weekend. So um, please Palace, do us a favour. I mean we got we gave you three points at the bridge. How about you know give us some back please thanks. Um but yeah that's really it for me. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me all of your thoughts on that um, performance down in the comment section below. I mean who was saying we should start by Chuai? Who was that? Who was saying just calm down? You know he's just having a bad patch. Oh yeah that was me. I mean <laughs> to be honest um I did say it, no, I think it was for the semi-final, um, to maybe drop him. But, like I said yesterday in the preview, it was a kick up his ass, and um, it worked wonders, because he was incredible today. Not inch perfect, not as good as he has been before, especially before he scored his first goal. Still, sometimes it took a little bit too long to pass the ball, but after he scored, it was incredible. Um, anyway, again, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. We massively do appreciate that. Check out the fan cams, which will be out later, or should be out later anyway. Um, but yeah, again, thank you guys for watching. Up the shells, upwards and onwards. And I'll see you next time.